this is Mark. I'll, I'll, I'll take a first stab at this. Um, you know, I, I think it, it strikes me, you are absolutely right, that cities are very different. And I think all of our technology platforms, I would have to imagine, are very different. You know, I was completely shocked having come from, you know, the private sector. Uh, when I first came into government in 2011, we were still running Lotus Notes uh, for email believe it or not. And, you know, it, it, it took you know, moving heaven and earth to really get onto Microsoft 365 platform. Um, and, and not every city department is on that right now. So San Francisco has a long way to go in terms of our own internal infrastructure. And the irony is not lost that we, you know, we become the technology hub here in San Francisco of, of a number of, you know, innovative companies throughout the world. Um, yet our own infrastructure is pretty far behind. But what I, what I do think in terms of the people that, that are starting to work on this would be my thoughts is is really to work with the vendors that are the prominent ones like Granicus that really supply and really be, have become the outsourced providers um, to different cities across the country and so I guess the comment is really to stay general um, because I think you know you're gonna have to create a platform that every city is gonna have to really modify on its own and really have a, a technology department that's going to be willing to work with it um, and, and create and customize it, but really I think having an eye towards what some of those vendors are doing right now that are prevalent, um, but also some of the vendors, whether it be open source, open you know, gov type vendors that are going to become prevalent in the future and really make sure you have a dialogue with them to see what, they're, what, what types of technologies they're promoting, what, type, what, what they're using and what they can promote and to really tie into them. I think that's going to have the quickest effect from my perspective. Terrific. Thank you. Ben, any thoughts on that? Absolutely. I think that start. I think that starting with targeting uh, vendors that have already taken a large market share, like Granicus, is a great first step. Uh, I come at this as a uh, open source developer, but before I get too far into the weeds on that, I'm one of fifty. And I, I would love to, to be the one that everyone's going to follow on every single thing. But at the end of the day, uh, even people who are watching this who are software developers and have want to get investors, you have to have an MVP. You have to have a workable product to show your investors. And so the reason that I've asked for an MVP is because um, I need to be able to show to people who are used to hearing from vendors that things take not months but years and don't take a couple of thousand dollars but cost millions or billions of dollars. Um, and I come from a city where we almost spent a billion dollars. We spent seven hundred million dollars on a time management system called City Time, and nobody until the very end seemed to realize that maybe that was a lot of money to be spending on a piece of software. Uh, so that's something. To, to keep in mind. So when we're looking at how to build things, what I'm dealing with is people who don't remember that once upon a time there was WordStar and WordPerfect and Microsoft Word. They're used to a software uh, monoculture. They're also uh, used to a culture where nobody ever got fired for hiring IBM or Microsoft. And so what they need to be able to have is a product that they can touch, that they can feel, that they can demo and show people that can build confidence so that when people are running around afraid of open source, uh, because that's the messaging that people are getting from vendors, don't use open source, it's scary, it's dangerous, uh, use Microsoft Word. Uh, don't use open source, use Internet Explorer. So most of us... Um, are using Firefox and other items that come out of that Firefox uh, world. And so when people ask me what is open source, I say, remember Internet Explorer being pretty bad? And they say, well, it's still bad. And then I say, well, Firefox is what we all created, and that's free and open source. And I try to explain to people that it's about a license, not so much the code. But getting back to what would be helpful is competition is great. I'm a Drupal developer. Uh, some people like WordPress, other people still like Joomla. Uh, that, that community is uh, not as strong as the Drupal community, but uh, we need different components. We need an ability to draft the code. 
uh, we need an ability to host that code in a place where people can comment on it and interact with it. And then we need a place where once you publish that code, it can go to somewhere where that code is hosted. And so as part of my initial remarks, I identified some of the people who are already there. And uh, what would be helpful from those of you in the audience is help us identify the competitors. Uh, right now, we have uh, Open Congress. We have Councilmatic. We have Madison. All three of them are uh, well suited for hosting uh, the legislation. We also have Granicus. So we've got four products out there. Um, I think helping to identify and coalesce around a, a project or multiple projects would be incredibly helpful. And then making sure that for each piece that we build, that uh, we've created a, a standardized uh, framework would be helpful. So if we're going to use a markup language for our legislation, then that means we can easily take legislation have it drafted, and then we just need something to connect the legislation that's being drafted to the legislation that's being hosted for, uh, for uh, comment. And then once we have the legislation hosted for comment, we need a connector that will connect it to being published as the law. And then when we host the law, we need a connector that will take us to the iterative process where when somebody looks at the law and says, this law is broken, I don't like it, they can click on it, and then that can start the whole legislative process over again. So uh, my emphasis would be uh, creating more free and open source products, making sure we are aware of all the folks uh, in the space, get them all into a room, and uh, competition drives uh, our, our, our economy in America, and it's a good as long as we can make sure that we have a free and open source framework and a standard uh, that we can all agree to so that we can all compete in a free market. In terms of timeline, Software code has a habit of outpacing legal code uh, by orders of magnitude. Uh, what I think would be incredibly helpful, at least amongst the Free Law Five and any other municipalities, is uh, in New York City and in San Francisco, you have folks like Mark and myself, and I'm not sure how many of legislators there are like this, like us. Uh, if you're out there over the internet, you're watching this, please get in touch with us so that we can build out our coalition. And uh, I think it would be helpful for us to form a working group of the CTOs and the government employees that are getting these demands and facing these demands so that they can have the support of one another. In terms of timelines, I can tell you that we just had a hearing on open law in New York City on Monday. And uh, the timeline for that is our contract is going to be uh, expiring at the end of the year. And my hope is that instead of paying the New York legal publishing company that we have a suite of nonprofits who are offering a very similar service for a far less uh, cost uh, and being able for New York City, San Francisco, and others to all get together and say, you know what, we'd all like to jointly, as part of a civic commons, uh, purchase this software as a service so that we are contributing to a free and open source software repository and uh, paying developers to build it uh, instead of buying the same product over and over again, uh, which, which is, is kind of ridiculous if you think about it because if it costs $30,000 to build something the first time, why would you charge everybody else $30,000? That's pure profit and that's literally the government subsidizing corporations and at the end of the day that becomes corporate welfare. It's much better investment at this point in time to purchase right of free and open source license. Uh, we also have open legislation. Uh, we just passed that. Uh, our city is working closely with uh, Granicus to make that a reality and I'm very hopeful about where that will be going. But at the end of the day I'd really like us to have competition in the marketplace. I'm looking for the Firefox that will take us to having an Internet Explorer that is where it needs to be and eventually having a Chrome jump out of nowhere. And Fox Law. <laughs> fair enough. And uh, then in terms of legislative drafting, Washington, D.C. has taken a huge lead on it. But I can tell you right now the New York City Council is trying to find what we should be using for legislative drafting. And then Open API is something that hopefully Granicus will be rolling out. I hope to work closely with Supervisor Farrell to create and make sure that the demand is there. Anyone watching from other cities, it would be helpful if you and your communities told your legislators that, that it was important to them. 
And uh, the other key piece is government is very slow to move and it cannot keep up with technology, but when technology outpaces government, government is really good about being shamed into action. Uh, when Tom, Neil, and I put the legislation online, it took six months for them to do it themselves after literally well, decades and years of them refusing to do it. So I think you have a huge opportunity there, and uh, thank you for the great question. Awesome.